there were times to do it. Some of you might want to argue it, but it doesn't matter. I want you to know that as far as I'm concerned, everybody in Healing Wings is a better disciple of Jesus than me. I'm going to tell you it only once. You believe, that's your problem. You don't believe, that's your problem. Everybody in Healing Wings is a better disciple than me. I'm going to give you the reasons. I'm the only person in Healing Wings that took 40 years to accept Jesus. There are people here that are not even 40 yet. They have known Jesus. There are some children that are six, that are seven. They have known Jesus. I'm the only one. It took me 41 years to accept him. It's not a good, it's not a good record. In order to accept him, I'm the only one, to my knowledge, that he had to shoot before I could accept him. And God has given me so many revelations. He has given me so many revelations because I'm um, a difficult case. I used to laugh at people who talked of the devil. Say, what is the devil? Who devil does it exist? Huh? Until God opened my eyes to see the devil. I know for a fact that God exists. And so there are so many people in healing wings that relate to God by faith. I know him by knowledge. Mm -hmm. Because my case was a difficult case. He opened my eyes. I have seen demons. So that I will know uh, that this, my own understanding, is rubbish. Most people in healing wings didn't have to go through that route. God has used me to raise the dead three times. Why would I not believe him? He has used me to change blood. He has used me to heal cancer, to heal HIV AIDS. Uh, there was a time in my relationship with him that I sat down and I said, what is the meaning of this? Who are you, self? Where did you come from? because he was just out, completely out of my imagination. Where did God come from? Was it that he fought other gods to become God? But, you know, that I could not believe. When God anointed my hand, I didn't believe. I put it on my head, I fell down. Put my hand on my side, I will, I will test this with my, with my own head. And so I, I tell you this because I needed a lot of convincing. Because I'm what they call, I, I read a book when I was doing my A-levels by Abba Camus. says, I was on car du terre. That means a doubtful case. Hmm? So when I see people like Amara, huh? I envy her. I say, oh my God, but I had known God at this age. This girl is set for an incredible life. So I just said, you know, I, I just told God, I will come today and admit to you so that you don't look at me as somebody who is uh, something, something. No, you are much better than I am. Uh, and <laughs> I have, I'm in a greater trouble than you are because I'm the one that is preaching the gospel. I cannot, I cannot now, <laughs> I cannot now uh, contradict what I preach. Uh, I will be in trouble. So I cannot come to you and tell you that God told me that uh, Jide is going to meet the Prime Minister of Uganda because I just made it up. Ah, uh, I would never dare. 
And so I want to talk to you today about a God that I know. Hmm? Because he insisted that I must know him. No excuses. He insisted that I must know him. And he made sure that I would have no excuse. Just a gift. I know yours is also a gift, but mine is, a, you know, I mean, there are some gifts that you give somebody and they receive it immediately. My own was a much more difficult one. So today I want to talk to you about spiritual hypocrisy. You know, wonder what has it got to do with my introduction? Me too, I don't know. I just told the Holy Spirit. I will come and make that confession to you at the beginning. Mm -hmm. Who is a hypocrite? A hypocrite is different from a spiritual hypocrite. A spiritual hypocrite is that person that knows that God is God, but still acts as if he is not God. The Bible says he who comes to God must believe that he exists. I challenge you that you are here today. I say you know that God exists. It has gone beyond conjecture. Hmm. At the time, I was counting miracles. You know, when he does something, I say, ah, who did this one? Then another one. Huh? You know, by the time you reach how many coincidences, you conclude that it's not a coincidence. You can't have 50 coincidences. Hmm. You can't have 100 coincidences. Somebody is behind it. He's your God. I want to start by looking at the book of Acts, chapter 4, verse 32. Acts 4, 32. There's a scripture that I had a problem with. Didn't like it at all. I must confess to you now. I had a problem with it. I said, which kind of scripture is this one? I don't do that again. Acts 4.32. I'm going to read it to the end of chapter 4. Then I'm going to read, go on to Acts 5.1 to 11. Really, it's Acts 5.1 to 11 that I want to read. But I want to give you the background of it from 4.32. Now the multitude of those who believed were of one heart and one soul. Neither did anyone say that any of the things he possessed was his own. But they had all things in common. And with great power, the apostles gave witness to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus. And great grace was upon them all. Nor was there anyone among them who lacked. For all who were Possessors of lands or houses sold them and brought the proceeds of the things that were sold and laid them at the apostles' feet and they distributed to each as anyone had need. And Joseph, who was also named Barnabas by the apostles, which is translated son of encouragement, a Levite of the country of Cyprus, having land, sold it and brought the money and laid it at the apostles' feet. Chapter 5. But a certain man named Ananias with Sapphira, his wife, sold a possession and he kept back part of the proceeds, his wife also being aware of it and brought a certain part and laid it at the Apostles' feet. But Peter said to Ananias, Why has Satan filled your heart to lie to the Holy Spirit and keep back part of the price of the land for yourself? While it remained, was it not your own? And after it was sold, was it not in your own control? Why have you conceived this thing in your heart? You have not lied to men, but to God. Then Ananias, hearing these words, fell down 
and breathed his last. So great fear came upon all those who had these things. And the young men arose and wrapped him up and carried him out and buried him. Now it was about three hours later when his wife came in, not knowing what had happened. And Peter answered her, tell me whether you sold the land for so much. She said, yes, for so much. Then Peter said to her, how is it that you have agreed together to test the spirit of the Lord? Look, the feet of those who have buried your husband are at the door, and they will carry you out. Then immediately she fell down at his feet and breathed her last. And the young men came in and found her dead, and carrying her out, buried her by her husband. So great fear came upon all the church and upon all who had these things. Let us pray. Thank you, Father. Father, I want to thank you to start with for the wonderful things you did in this fellowship for seven days from the 1st of June to the 7th of June, you brought to your people, Lord God Almighty, to hear a message that you told me to give them. And Lord God Almighty, on the seventh day, they brought petitions to you, over 26 petitions. Father Lord God Almighty, you have said to me, that you will not allow my word to fall to the ground. And so I thank you because I know that every word, every petition they brought that I agreed with is fulfilled in Jesus' name. Father, Lord God Almighty, this morning we are here again, Lord God Almighty, to land at your feet. Help me to deliver this message to the praise and glory of your name. In Jesus' mighty name I pray. Amen and amen. The story of Ananias and Sapphira is a, is, a, is a terrible story. I, you know, when I when I read it, I said, "No, this is not nice." Uh -uh. You man, you brought the money, but not all of it. Why you have to kill him? Uh -huh. Why did he have to be killed? Was Peter not too hard on Ananias and Sapphira? Took me some time. I've told you, it always takes me time to understand the scriptures. Hmm? Ananias and Sapphira would not have had any problem if they sold the land and didn't bring any money. There would have been no problem if they didn't sell their land, but decided to keep it for themselves. There was only a problem because they sold it for X amount and said it was for Y amount. Why did they say that? Because there were some other people that sold their land and brought everything. They had seen the example of Joseph, son named Barnabas, the son of encouragement. Uh, he was not even from the Commonwealth of Israel, he was from Cyprus. He sold his land and brought all the money. And so they pretended that they had also bringing all the money. Hmm. They pretended that they were also bringing all the money. And you know, <laughs> There are some things that you read in the scriptures. Okay, I'm going to give you my own interpretation. Hmm? Ananias and Sapphira, they are in heaven. They are saved. Hmm? There are some things that happened in the scripture. They just happened there because the people there were guinea pigs. Hmm? God caused it to happen to them, so we will learn from them. We needed some people to use to teach us that we should not be spiritual hypocrites. We tell lies. And we don't realize that God is listening. In this particular case, they were pretending to be spiritual when their heart was in the wrong place. But Peter told them that, look, you are not just lying to man. You are lying to the Holy Spirit. You know why I think that, you know, Ananias and Sapphira, they are absorbed? <laughs> because Peter is a worse hypocrite 
than Ananias and Sapphira. Go and read this. Go and read this. His his history in the Bible. There was a time when uh, uh, you know he was he was always eating with the Gentiles, and then when the Jews came, he pretended that no no I yeah, not I not stay with the Gentiles. God did not strike him dead. The way he struck Ananias and Sapphira dead. The hypocrisy of, 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 of Peter was such that Jesus said, all of you, uh, we became in this night. Peter said, all these ones, all these ones, they are here people. Uh, I know that they don't even like you, but me, as for me, my own, <laughs> I'm with you, God, God, God. And Jesus said, you, you, before the cock will crow, you will betray me three times. Hmm? And it happened, and still, Jesus did not strike Peter dead, but he struck Ananias and Sapphira dead. Hmm? Why? Because he needed at that time in the inception of the church to lay an example. Hmm? He wanted an example to be laid that the God that you are dealing with is the God of truth. Is a God that sees he who made the eye can see. He's a God that reads the heart and the mind. You can fool man, you cannot fool God. God is not mocked. Hmm? Jesus says, there is nothing hidden that will not be revealed. And when you look at the scriptures, you will find that there is nothing that Jesus railed against. I don't know if that is the that, that word is too big. There is nothing that angered Jesus as much as hypocrisy. Huh? The Bible says that he was walking down and he saw a tree, and the tree had green leaves, and he said, Oh, this fig tree will have will have fruit. When he got to the fig tree, there was no fruit on the fig tree, and he cursed the fig tree. Nobody will have fruit. Any any fix any, any from you again. And by the next day, Peter was aghast. Said, Lord, the victory that you cost is dried up. Hmm? In the scripture, trees are people. Understand it spiritually. We are trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord. The tree was a hypocrite. If he didn't have green leaves, nothing would have happened to it. But he had green leaves, uh, which was a pretense that it had fruits. Uh, and so you and I must be careful so that we are not pretender believers. Hmm? You are not pretender believers. I always make a statement. I say, I've never met a believer that did not believe. <laughs> but there are so many believers that don't believe. And so I have come this morning to say, look, you need to check your feelings. Hmm? Check your feelings. Because there is hypocrisy in all of us. It's a question of degree. And to what extent? Do you want people to consider you to be spiritual? You are in trouble. Are you more concerned about people listening to you when you are praying in public than you are concerned about the God that is hearing? I don't know who was, there was somebody who had a prayer request. Okay, there was the last person uh, on, on Friday night, Saturday morning. Edward E. His prayer request, we couldn't hear it because his, his phone was, was acting up. Uh, and so, uh, instead of harassing him, God told me I had the, I had I had the prayer. You don't have to worry. <laughs> uh, so I told him you don't have to repeat it. The person that you are praying to had it. Okay, we didn't hear. We say amen. <laughs> you know, it is accomplished. Uh, are you always aware? Because you know that's the problem with public praying. When we are praying publicly, I concerned that look, these people are here. Huh? There is Sister Appa that is sitting there. And I can see Sister Esther there. Uh, and you have lost track 
of the prayer because you can't impress God, but you can impress man. And that's why the book of First Peter he wrote something. It was, it was talking about women, but it applied to everybody. He said, let it be the hidden person of the heart, which with the incorruptible beauty of a gentle and quiet spirit, which in the sight of God is very precious. He said, that thing that is hidden is where God is where God meets her. There was a lady that came way back when, years ago. She was a healing wind and she, she told us that her husband was a terrible person. He was always beating her up. And uh, so what I was about to do, because he, she, was, she was a member of Healing Wings, but her husband was not. So we decided, okay, look, we will just visit your, your place. We won't say anything to your husband, we will just visit. So he knows that, you know. Uh, but you know, part of the problem of this lady, her place is just one room with her husband. In the middle of the night, she wakes up to pray. And she doesn't pray quietly. She's shouting the prayer. You understand? While the husband is asleep. And then she is praying about the husband. <laughs> uh, thank God, this my husband will do something to his heart. This my husband, our ah, father, you have to reach him. So the husband will get up and say, okay, yeah. so I'm a demon. I will show you that. I'm a demon now, we're bitter. <laughs> we say, look, there's no wisdom in this. What are you trying to? Huh? You, 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 you are praying and praying and disturbing everybody. So that everybody knows what. Hmm? You are going around carrying your Bible so, so that what will happen. Huh? Some people, the reason why they cram scriptures is so that they can drop it, drop it here, drop it here, drop it here. Huh? So that some sister will be impressed, say, Kai. <laughs> Bolaji, 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 Bolaji had, a, had a boyfriend. He came to, to talk to me about him. Say, what, what is the problem? He said, This boy, every time she goes to see him, he brings out his Bible and starts reading it. And then, you know, for like 30 minutes, he won't say anything. He'll just be reading his Bible. <laughs> I say, Balaji, get away from this man. <laughs> well, it, it is time when you come to visit him that he must read this Bible. What is he trying to prove? Uh, what exactly is he trying to prove? <laughs> he must be very, very careful. Let's look at Matthew 7.21. Matthew 7.21. Some of these I'm going to read from the message because, you know, for this kind of... Message, you need the message Bible <laughs> because he, he has a way of writing these things that are just, just so direct. Matthew 7 21. Knowing the correct password, saying master, master, for instance, isn't going to get you anywhere with me. What is required is serious obedience, doing what my father wills. I can see it now. At the final judgment, thousands trotting up to me and saying, Master, we preached the message. We bashed the demons. Our God-sponsored projects had everyone talking. And do you know what I'm going to say? You missed the boat. All you did was use me to make yourself important. You don't impress me one bit. You're out of here. But I want to tell you that, you know, some scriptures, we read them in one direction and we don't apply them in another one. Bible says, he who dwells in the secret place of God. That secret place is a secret place of prayer. It's a secret place of fellowship. It's a secret place of communion. It is not public. That secret place is there while you are walking down the road. Because we walk by faith. 
Huh? Okay, it is not only when we kneel that we are exercising the faith. When we are walking about, we are walking by faith. Hmm? And so be careful so that you don't get a kick out of expressing your faith. You're not excited about giving somebody money. Hmm? When you give somebody money, sometimes you're upset because you needed to give the person money. The person didn't have the money. Hmm? Sometimes we're offended because we give and we are not appreciated. What are they supposed to appreciate you for? Where did you get the money from? Hmm? Doesn't matter. If you actually rely on the appreciation of men, you'll get, you'll get tired because uh, some people, when you give them something, they hate you because they don't see why you should have and they should not. Hmm? Don't let your reputation be involved <clears throat> in your faith. Uh, hypocrites kept me out of the church. I remember in Rome where I got married. That's where I met Karen. We got married in Rome. I would go to church and I would look at different people. Say this one, what's he doing in church? Huh? So he's fighting his wife. There is one lady who every weekend he must, he must phone CSB and I'm leaving this man, I'm leaving him, I'm leaving him. I'm not, you know, I can't take it anymore. And my own man will start to plead with him. Okay, ah, Adam, you have five children. How can you do this and that? Blah, 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 you know. One day, my mother grabbed the phone and says, Madam, leave. Go back home. Go. Just go. And so you meet these people in church. You know, this one is having an affair with this. You see all these people. And I say, you know, what is the meaning of this? What kind of faith is this? Until one day, I met the Lord. I said, I can't be part of these people. You know, I mean, they're, 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 they're all hypocrites. When I met the Lord, the first thing that he showed me by revelation was that I'm a hypocrite. Hmm? He showed me in a dream, and uh, I was in the library of my institute, and they created a committee of about four or five people. And I was a member of the committee. They said they want to review the library. They want to change everything. They want to improve everything there. And I was a, an esteemed member of that committee. And when we finished all the recommendations, the chairman sat down and said, OK, let's go through what we are recommended here. I said, the first thing we are recommending is that uh, Femi Aribisala must not be allowed anymore to steal any books from this library. And I said, uh, uh, what? But I'm a member of this committee. What is the meaning of this? I said, ah, but I don't, I don't steal any books. There was no argument. The chairman brought out a book. Then he opened the book. It turned out to be like a computer. It what looked like a computer turned out to be like a television. He turned a dial, and that was I. I was watching myself in the library. And I knew that everybody was now watching. I knew that. It was a matter of time. I was going to steal a book from that library. Huh? You know, the grace of God is, you know, <laughs> Karen came and woke me up. <laughs> before, I mean, before I could do, do this, do the theft, I said, Kai. I've been attacking everybody for hypocrisy. I didn't know that. I mean, I'm Baba Saleh of them. Huh? My brother, my sister, we're all hypocrites. In different ways, huh? in different degrees, we want men to see us as righteous. Huh? And the song that says, everybody testify you are good. Sometimes we want everybody to testify that we are good. It's a lie, you are not good. Hmm? Only one is good and that is God. Hmm? Only one is good and that is God. God gave me a revelation. I've said this before in the midweek service. I'm going to say it again by permission. I was walking from Adetokumbo Ademala, and there was a member of Healing Wings that was walking in front of me. I was walking behind him. And as he was walking, shit was falling out of his behind. I was, I was walking behind him. I, I know the person. I never told him. 
I was walking behind him and it was falling down. He didn't know. But I could see it. He was walking all the way. And where was he coming? He was coming here. He was coming here. Hmm? Jesus said, one of you is going to betray me. He said, is it me? Is it me? And so who, who is that person that I was walking behind? Is it you? Go before the Lord now and ask him. Is it you? Are you the one? Go, 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 go to him now and say, Father, Lord, God Almighty, am I the one? Am I the person? Hmm? Am I the person? Thank you. This thing was as disconnected. Is it me, Lord? Is it me? Don't be like Peter saying, it cannot be me. It can't be me. Hmm? It cannot be me. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. You see, we are so used to deceiving men. Hmm? We deceive men. You know, when you are dating somebody, <laughs> uh, they will see you in your in your Sunday best. Uh, you will pretend. Until, you know, that's why I don't, when I go to weddings, I don't like that song that says, that means that, you know, I don't, the thing don't finish now. <laughs> I don't capture the man now. Huh? There was a lady that came to see me. Uh, after she got married, her mother-in-law called her to a conference. She said, this is our son that you have married to. It's a drug addict. They didn't tell her before. She said, it's a drug addict too. So I'm just telling you, we have to be managing him. Huh? Are you know drug addicts? Hmm? They use everything to smoke. They will smoke the television, literally. You know what I mean? You will come home, the television is gone because they have sold it to buy smoke. Huh? Well, you didn't know. She, did, she didn't know all this. That's so why she said, you know, what am I supposed to do? Huh? We're used to deceiving men. Hmm? Nicodemus came to Jesus by night. Why did he come by night? Because he didn't want people to know. Hmm? But we must understand that if we are pretending to man, God is there. Hmm? Every pretense to man is a pretense to God. Hmm? But sometimes we think we can, we can deceive God himself. Hmm? Because you know that God is with you. You sing about it. You pray about it. You talk about it. And then we do certain things as if God is not there. Huh? I've discovered something about God that is so obvious. He's not a man. Huh? Let, me, let me tell you what I mean by that. You see, with men, you can get away with some things. You do some things, they just leave it. Not God, though. Especially not with you and with me. Hmm? You will not get away with it. With God. Hmm? The scripture says in the psalm, it says, people say, how does God know? Is there knowledge in the most high? I say, where is the knowledge? <laughs> where, where did knowledge from? The person who created the, the ends of the earth. Huh? Who created all the stars. Who, you know, he will have no knowledge. You must be joking. You must be joking. Hmm? Huh? No matter your relationship with God, you can't sustain hypocrisy with him. Hmm? Let me give you an example. One big hypocrite in the Bible was David. Hmm? Big hypocrites. 
David was a lover of God. Huh? But he lived by stealing people's things. He had area men, they would go and raid people and kill them and carry their property. Hmm? And one day, since he is used to stealing people's property, nothing felt nothing was happening. He decided to steal a man's wife. Huh? And when he stole the man's wife, you know, he buried everything in the sand. Even had a husband killed. And when, when, when God sent a prophet to him that, you know, God said, so, he, came, he came to me to him with a parable. Hmm? So there was a man in your kingdom that has this, you know, and every, had a, you know, a rich man that had all kinds of lambs, cows, everything, etc. But when the guests came to him, it was the lamb of this poor man that he that he decided to kill. To David said, "What in this kingdom? In this? No, 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 no. That man is dead. He's a dead man." Hmm? He said, "You are the one. You are the one." I didn't know I was a prophet. I took this message to my first pastor in Pentecostal Assembly. I went to him and said, "Look." I'm going to resign from my job. I said, why? I said, my boss is, is too troublesome. He's always, always knocking heads together. He's always doing all kinds of things. Uh, you know, do you think I should resign? I said, no, 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 you, you resign. Uh, without your credentials, you'll get another job. I said, you are the one. You are the one. You are the one. Hmm? That pastor, huh? hmm. when they discovered that God had given me the anointing to heal. He told me that I was I must follow him into Jebu Ode uh, because the the our landlord in the church was the late Odutola. When I was a young a young man, Odutola tires so he made tires. That was his own this day. He was a multimillionaire, the one that owned the building, but he was paralyzed from the neck down. So he told me. You know, we go on this Saturday, we go to Jebu, they we drove all the way to Jebu, they said, you are going to pray for him, that God will heal him. So me too, I, was, I said, why not? Uh, I went along. When we got there, he told the man, he said, you know, this young boy, power, the power, grace of God is upon him, you know, and we have come to pray for you. And God will heal you. But God wants you to do something first. He wants you to give the church your building. Hi. I wanted to, I wanted to, to, to enter the ground. I didn't know that is what this man has brought me to do. Huh? He was going to use me to collect the man's building. Hmm? Jesus says, woe unto you, Pharisees, for you devour widows' houses. Huh? They will pray, pray, pray for the widow, but really they want the widow to sign over his, their, their property to them. Mm? They're waiting for the widow to die. A pastor friend of mine told me that they were praying for this, this lady because she didn't have a job. And uh, they said the prayer squad should, should start praying that she, she must have a job. You know. And then she got a job. And when she got a job, I think they, they, they were paying her 15,000 naira. So he came to me and said, you know, we prayed and then the job she got was 15,000 naira. He said, you know, so how much can she give the church out of that? <laughs> so I realized that the whole point of the praying for the girl was how much they could get from her. So he said, ah, you have to tell the prayer squad to go back I pray that God, God has to change that job. He has to give another job. Hmm? He has to give another job. Hmm? My brother, my sister, I started this discussion by telling you that if, if God has done anything in my life, he has ensured that I know that he is real. Hmm? Because that is what hypocrisy does. Hypocrisy denies the divinity of God. It denies that God is God. It denies that God can see everything because 
the hypocrite, the spiritual hypocrite. It's only concerned about men, not about God. Hmm? As somebody come to you and told you a lie before, and then he will swear by God. You say, I swear to so, 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 and so. Huh? He is telling you, you are more important than God. Huh? He's not concerned about God at that time. He can blaspheme God, he can, you know, but you are more important. Never, never receive you. Somebody will come to you and tell you that, look, I've looked at such high and low. I couldn't get anything. Huh? You are the only one that can help me with this. Never help somebody that, does, that comes and tells you that. You are the only one that can say, I'm the only one that can help you, Abby. Ah, then you are finished. If I'm the, me, I can't even help myself. I can't help myself. How can I help you? You are finished. Huh? Jesus' anger was reserved primarily for hypocrites. Primarily for hypocrites. Matthew 23. Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for you devour widows' houses and for pretense make long prayers. Therefore, you will receive greater condemnation. Hmm? How many people did Jesus pronounce woe on? Hypocrites. Huh? Hypocrites. Hypocrites. So, you know, there, there, was, there was a man in our fellowship, this, this same fellowship. Uh, we, he, he, he was, uh, we used to have um, um, lunch our fellowship. And this man had three children, wife and three daughters. And then suddenly he disappeared. He just disappeared. We couldn't find him. Prayed, prayed, we didn't find him. Looked for him, no notice anything. He disappeared for three years. After three years, he showed up again. He came back. So I called the man. I said, ah, wait a minute. Where have you been? You left your family and everybody. I said, evangelism, evangelism. Say evangelism. He was doing evangelism. I said, evangelism what? Which evangelism were you doing? I did evangelism. This is, this is rubbish. What are we talking about? You are doing evangelism. Your evangelism cannot go anywhere. Huh? You have left three, your wife and three children, and you you you, you are doing evangelism. Huh? Look, my, my, my mother used to have this women's prayer meeting in her house. My mother and a prayer warrior. Huh? Well, you know, but this women's prayer meeting, huh? First of all, they were first of all gist. <laughs> huh? And so some of these gist will be, you know, that man, is he still chasing that woman? Yes, so. <laughs> <laughs> eh? So he's still in that business. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Huh? Then they will say, ah, we must pray for him. We must pray for him. We must pray for him. It's a lie. It is just the story that they have come. They have come to share gossip. Well, that gossip, they have wrapped it huh? inside a religious hypocrisy. Hmm? When somebody, when you fight somebody, when you argue with somebody, huh? Then you look at the person, you say, okay, I'll pray for you, I'll pray for you. It's a lie, or you hate the person. Huh? It, that, that is religious hypocrisy. What are you praying for? You are gonna first of all, you are not gonna pray for the person. Basically, what you are telling him is that he's beyond hope. Hmm? And sometimes you that are saying you are doing evangelism, you tell him to go to hell. You know, how why would you want somebody to go to hell if you if you don't if you believe in this hell? How does it square in? Mm -hmm. Okay. Please. Be straightforward with God. I read a story of a, a lady called Cynthia. She came to church. She said she was so tired. Huh? But everybody was told to stand up. And she couldn't sit down. Then the Holy Spirit spoke to her. I said, Cynthia, why don't you sit down? I know you are tired. Huh? But Cynthia was thinking, if she sat down, how will people think? So everybody is, is, is standing and Cynthia is sitting down, but it doesn't matter what anybody thinks. God knows the reason why you are sitting down. Huh? Is there anybody here who was here when Hope was the choir, was the was the main singer in the choir? Okay, only you. Okay, <laughs> you, you know, Hope. I didn't know. Hope, hope always gave offering. You know what he does? He goes like this. Nothing in his hand, though. 
<laughs> they came to tell me that, look, uh, uh, doctor, this hope guy, he will, he will put his hand in his pocket and he will come and do like this. Uh, why was he doing that? If you don't have money to give, don't give. Don't give. You have been accepted in the beloved. Ah. Huh? You don't have to pretend. You don't need to pretend anymore. Huh? Some people come, you know, I mean, the, the, the Karen and I, in Victory Parish, we came to church one day and suddenly the pastor just became angry with everybody. Tell you people, I don't even understand you. What's the matter with you? What's the matter with you, you know? And what was the problem? He is trying to build one big church in Lekki now. Mm -hmm. And money wasn't coming out. So everybody should stand up. Everybody should stand up. Stand up, all of you, stand up. Who can give this church one million naira? Huh? So if you raise your hand, they will send a piece of paper to you. Then they will tell you to sit down. Then they will say, who can give the church 500,000? Then you raise your hand. They give you a piece of paper telling you to sit down. Who can give a church? Wow, that, and he kept going, and we were looking at ourselves. Huh? What is the meaning of this? Huh? Then he got to him, who can give this church 100 naira? We are still watching, we, are, we are looking at him. What about 50 naira? <laughs> you know what the pastor did? He told them to give him the microphone. How are we supposed to build this church? How are we supposed to build? How are we supposed? Karen was there. How are we supposed to build this church? I said, let us fast and pray about it. <laughs> huh? The man came to, 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 to apologize to me later on. I think people told him, ah, what is your this? But you could see that he was calling out hypocrites. Mm -hmm. I give him one million. Everybody will know that, hey, that one is a Baba Saleh, something. You know, what we know from the scripture that, you know, the woman who gave who, who gave two mites who received more commendation from Jesus. But no, 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 no. He's looking for hypocrites so that when you see that man, you look at him and say, Kai, that's the man that gave one million. Ha! God, we thank you. We thank you. Huh? Be very, very careful. People go to, 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 to book lunches. They say, I'm giving this book one million naira. They say, ka, 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 ka. When the times come, they don't pay. Ask Karen. There are a lot of people that, that made pledges for her book. They will not pay anything. They have received the applause. Hmm? They have received the commendation. Hmm? <clears throat> and that's all that they're looking for. Hmm? That's all that they're looking for. Jesus says, hypocrites. Well, did Isaiah prophesy about you? Saying, these people draw near to me with their mouth. Honor me with their lips. But their heart is far from me. Jesus actually sent this scripture to us. He sent it, the one that was in Isaiah, sent it to us through Muslim Allah day. People might not have forgotten. Send it to us. That we must be careful. That we should not just worship him with our mouths. Hmm? Okay? And with our lips, but we must worship him with our heart. Huh? He must worship him with our heart. Years back, I decided to gift churches with video shops. You know, I just took that decision because, you know, <laughs> you know when I met God in the dramatic way that he met me, I said, I'm finished. I'm finished. Everything about me comes to God. So the first place was Pentecostal Assembly. Hmm? So I asked them to give me a space. They give me a big space. I built a huge shop in Pentecostal Assembly. I had about seven video booths with television. I put eight televisions on the, this thing, thousands of tapes so that you can come. You can even come and sit down and listen. To, you know, huh? Spent a lot of money on it. The pastor came to see us in the house. When he came to see us in the house, he said that he has a problem that he needs to share with us. He said, what is it? He said, the people in your shop, the people working there, they're wearing earrings. I said, and so? 
Ah, so, <laughs> it is not. Uh, uh, it is not. Is this you know? Is the he is concerned that they will go to heaven? Ah, he came to the wrong house. You see, this is my wife. Hmm? <laughs> she jumped on him. She said, "What? What did you say?" The man was scared. She said, "This kind of thing." The man ran away. She, he, he ran away. He, he thought we were like, you know, he come, he come to practice witchcraft on us. Huh? All that he could come to tell us was that people were wearing earrings in the, in the place. But I, 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 still don't, I, I still don't understand what, what that was about. Hmm? What that was about. Galatians 6.13 says, For not even those who are circumcised keep the law, but they desire to have you circumcised that they may boast in your flesh. Let's understand this one. They are not keeping the law, but they are insisting that other people be circumcised. Why? Huh? They are not keeping the law, and you're asking people to keep the law. You understand? Sometimes, you know what happens? We establish standards huh, that are ours. That's why I said, you know, <laughs> you're keeping as doctrines, the commandments of men. So, if I wear shoes. Then my standard is that everybody in healing wings must wear shoes. Okay? Because I know that that standard I have met. But the ones that I have not met is not going to be the standard in the church. Huh? There is a church. I wouldn't name the church for you. Because the husband, the, 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 the pastor is separated from his wife. The spiritual counsel there is that Husband and wife must not be in the same branch of the church because he is in Lagos. His wife is in London. They are divorced now. So it was against the law. Like this, uh, I don't know why she was like this. Huh? They have sinned against God by being <laughs> by coming together like this. Huh? They create laws and we do it in our mind. Hmm? We do it in our mind. We establish a standard by which we judge other people so that we can feel holier than thou. We can feel holier than them, that you know, we are we are obeying this, and you know, they are not, these people are not, they are not obeying this. Huh? We must, we must be careful. We must be careful. Because all these things are happening in the church, and we are seeing them. Catholic priests. Nobody told you not to get married when you decided that you will not marry. Huh? And then you are raping young boys. The Catholic Church has is, is, is been paying, 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 paying money. Reparations for all these priests raping boys, nuns doing abortions. It's a, you know, no, no, nobody forced you. But they want to pretend to be spirit, spirit. Huh? They want to pretend to be, to, to be spiritual. Jesus said, blind guides who strain out a gnat and swallow a camel. Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for you cleanse the outside of the cup and dish, but inside they are full of extortion and self-indulgence. Blind Pharisee, first cleanse the inside of the cup and the dish, and the outside will be clean to you. Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites. For you are like whitewashed tombs, which indeed appear beautiful outwardly, but inside are full of dead men's bones and all uncleanness. Even so, you also outwardly appear righteous to men, but inside you are full of hypocrisy and lawlessness. Huh? Everything is outside. Hmm? Everything is outside. Do you know that Herod was a Jew? He was not, was not Roman. He was a Jew. But he took his brother's wife. Huh? You know, I mean, some of the stories in the Bible, they are, they are fantastic stories. Huh? The Herod that was around when Jesus was born, hmm? he called them and said, you know, by the time the, 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 the three People came to see him and left. He called people and said, where is the Messiah supposed to be born? So it, it was in Bethlehem of Judah. 
He didn't say, oh, it's rubbish. Uh, Rick Messiah, nothing. No, he believes. Huh? But then he said, I'm going to fight this God. Huh? I'm going to kill that Messiah. So he sends people to go to Bethlehem and kill children. Hmm? How can you fight God? Huh? How, I mean, you know, I mean, it, it's, it is just ridiculous. How can man fool God? The other Herod, who took his brother's wife, the wife has a problem with John the Baptist. John the Baptist said, you are not supposed to take your, your brother's wife. Eh, so you get mouth, Abby. Okay. Huh? He had them arrested. They locked him up. But it's not enough. Huh? As far as she was concerned, he, she had to get him killed. Hmm? And so she, she manipulated the situation. I don't have to tell you the story. Until her husband was constrained to chop off the head of John the Baptist. Huh? And then he couldn't sleep at night anymore. We thought that she, the woman thought that she was going to get peace. Couldn't sleep at night anymore because one when she said, they said, this, I said Jesus are doing this. Said, ah, this John the Baptist, he must have risen from the dead. Huh? Did she think that her sin was going to go away by the killing of John the Baptist? Do you know that it was religious hypocrisy that led the people to kill Jesus? Huh? It was hypocrisy now because Jesus exposed them as hypocrites. By the time he preached and preached against them, everybody will know that these people are not spiritual, they're just pretending. They will put a Torah, a small, they will put it on top of their head, like the tie rope on it. Huh? That's the way they have interpreted a spiritual directive. They put it on their head. Instead of putting it inside their hearts, they will put it on their head like this. So they said, look, by the time he raised Lazarus from the dead, you've got to kill this man. Because if we don't kill him, huh? you, if we don't kill him, you have to look for a job. People won't give you money again. Huh? You know that it was religious hypocrisy that ensured that the bad Samaritans did not help that man that was dying on the road. Because they knew, I, 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 I read to the scripture, I said, the first person that came by I said, ah, this man is dying, no? but uh, I'm on my way to the Pentecostal Fellowship of Nigeria. I will pray for him when I get there so that he will be healed. You understand? Huh? Because part of it is that <laughs> if they minister to the man, hmm, he will not get any tight for 30 days. He has touched, you know, the man is a dead man. No tight for 30 days. No, you know, the man is doing all the calculations. Hmm? Do you do those kind of calculus? Huh? Have 10,000 naira. Somebody comes to you and says, Look, I have a big problem. What's the problem? You know, 7,000 is my problem. And you say, Kai, I give this man 7,000 now. It's only 3,000 that is left. Huh? This kind of calculation is calculating God out of it. My wife always say, God is not a God of calculus. If you know that it is God that you are that you are following, you can give him the 10,000 naira because you know you will get it back. Unless you are the one that, you know, when they give back to you, they say, praise the Lord, this child has arrived and 10,000 naira. It's a lie. Huh? It's a lie. You are accepted in the beloved. Don't, you know, be careful about the holy, holy, holy approach. They used to call them the holiness movement. They were carrying Bible, they were working like this. Huh? Who cares how you are working? Is, is it how you are working that is going to determine your destiny? Huh? Have you ever given a testimony saying, you know, praise the Lord? You know, I used to be very angry. Huh? If you if you upset me, ah, I will beat you. But thank God. Thank God. God has taken that thing out of my heart. It's a lie. It hasn't gone. It's a lie. You understand? Have you ever read the scripture? When you read the scripture, you say, Kai, Jesus says, turn the other cheek. Huh? Then you start looking for people to slap you. Have you tried that before? You start going there and say, you know, maybe this one will slap me, so I will turn the other one. Maybe this one, you won't get anybody. 
Nobody will slap you. Huh? Uh, you would have forgotten about it. One day, somebody will come and give you one slap. When, <laughs> when your eyes open and you see your ancestors, <laughs> then the, you will give him four back. Go, 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 go. <laughs> then you will remember that you are supposed to have the... Uh, let me tell you something. If Jesus healed you of malaria, you can get the malaria again. Uh, you don't know. Okay, open your window at night. Say you have been healed though. Open all your window, turn on your light, let the mosquitoes come in and see whether you won't get the malaria again. You will get the malaria again. Huh? It's the same. Mm -hmm. That is why the blood of Jesus, we're, 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 we're always coming, every day healing. So, uh, there is, you know, <laughs> where is boasting then? It is forbidden. Is it by what? By the law of faith. We cannot boast about anything. We can't boast by anything. Jesus healed a man, found him in the temple. He said, you know, sin no more. Otherwise, the worst thing will come to you. Even though I healed you, if you continue in sin, huh? don't say that you have now graduated. There is no graduate in the kingdom of God. That's why the worst hypocrites, they are pastors. They are pastors. When they were, <laughs> I, I visited a church. I don't know why. Was it a wedding or something? They were, they, were, they, were, they, were, they were preaching about the pastor. How the pastor was a first class this. He was so brilliant. He was so something. I saw the lie. Hmm? He was so this. And what, what has that got to do with anything? Are, they, are you supposed to follow the pastor? Are you following the pastor? Huh? Are you too? When you are shadowing somebody, then you tell them that you, 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 you graduated from a, a university of... A, Ogogoro is a lie. Uh, <laughs> you, 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 you will take them to a, to a restaurant that you cannot afford because you want to show that you are, you know, say, okay, yes, 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 yes you know, bring, bring the wine, bring it, bring it, bring it. Mm -hmm. Please be careful, be careful. Mm -hmm. Be careful. Remember what happened to Peter. I said it before. Uh -huh. Let's look at Matthew 7. Verse 3. Matthew 7, 3. The Bible says, the wisdom of God is without hypocrisy. Matthew. Okay, in fact, okay, I, I, I skip this one. Luke 6, 26. Luke 6, 26. There's trouble ahead. When we leave only for the approval of others, saying what flatters them, doing what indulges them. Popularity contests are not truth contests. Look how many scoundrel preachers were approved by your ancestors. Your task is to be true, not popular. Matthew 7, 3. It's easy to see a smudge on your neighbor's face and be oblivious to the ugly sneer on your own. Do you have the nerve to say, let me wash your face for you when your own face is distorted by contempt? It's this whole traveling and traveling road show mentality all over again, playing a holier than thou part instead of just living your part. Wipe that ugly sneer off your own face and you might be fit to offer a washcloth to your neighbor. It's a scripture that you know, but I decided to, to, to present it to you. Uh -huh. I decided to present it to you in a, in a, in a, in a different format. Mm -hmm. I used to drive a bus. Some of you here were around when I used to drive this, uh, this down foot. And, System video net on both sides. Look at this man is still laughing at me. <laughs> I Christian video net. You know. I went. I went to buy Nulet tapes, and there was one Indian man that was grinning at me. And I'm wondering, what's this Indian man grinning? He said, "Yeah." So I say, "So you're a Christian?" I say, "Yes." Yeah, yes. He said, I said, uh, "This is your faith. Uh, uh, does it allow you to drink wine?" I said, "Yes." Huh? 
I said, we even drink it to joy. He said, oh, very good, very good, very good. Then he asked me, he said, how many gods do you have? <laughs> I, 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 <laughs> initially, I thought, no, that's not what he asked me. I said, what do you mean? He said, how many gods? How many gods do you have? I said, you have only one god. He said, what? I said, we have only one. He said, you have only one god? Man lost interest. Say, well, what's the point? <laughs> what is the point of, of a faith where you only have one God? Huh? What if he happens to be busy or something? You know, what are you going to do? Huh? So I'm asking you, how many gods do you have? Huh? <laughs> the, 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 the Bible talked about some people. He said they they worshipped the Lord and then they served their own gods. Hmm? The 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 he, he, Elijah got, got tired. He got tired because the people the people the people were worshiping God and worshiping someone else. Hmm? You will know. Uh, again, you say that, you know, I'm a believer, but, you know, when it's time to get married, they're going to carry him into the village, and they're going to do all kinds of rituals to another god, the god of their family. Uh, I, got, I got engaged in Rome. So we went to uh, Karen's house, and then this Ghanaian man, Mr. Anan, he was the uh, MC. So he said, if you bring, uh, if you bring uh, uh, alcohol, so he poured it on the carpet to the ancestors. You know, <laughs> Karen's mother was upset because that carpet was a very expensive carpet. <laughs> that carpet was a very expensive carpet. Huh? She wrote a short story on it, the carpet engagement. That's what she called it. Huh? Where does these ancestors, where, 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 is, where are they, you know, I mean, Mr. Anan was, was, a, was a Christian. I mean, this is this pouring something to some ancestors somewhere. Huh? I had a great friend, Kishpino Gushaya. Every morning, she must go to a mass. Every morning. Hmm? One day, I walked into his bedroom. When I walked into his bedroom, on one corner like this was one picture of his old man embossed. The thing was spraying, you know, I mean, God opened my eyes. It was sending sprays all over the room. I didn't know that that, that thing was affecting him. Huh? I, I was using crutches. God said, carry it, carry it. It was in the night. Carry it, carry it. I carried it. I threw it over the landing. Huh? He was going for mass, but it was, that was another, that was another deity. that was there in his bedroom. Huh? Is there another reliance? I was looking for my brother. We hadn't seen him for years. He just disappeared. My auntie came to see me. He said, God is powerful, oh. God is powerful, oh. God is powerful, oh. He said it three times. But we need to add some local abracadabra to it. Huh? He said, this one, that Bayo has disappeared all these years. We need to go to see Baba Lawo to find out. Because uh, worshiping one God, you are holding another God at the same time. Hmm? What is your reliance? Is it only on one God? Uh, because you shall have no other God before God. You can't. You can't rely on anybody else. You cannot. When the time came, after seven years, God took me to see my brother. He took me to see my brother. Huh? We must not pretend with God. Huh? We must not pretend with God. This thing that we did, that look like uh, this, you know, for seven days. Huh? Wasn't my idea, oh. my God. I'm telling you something. There is something special about healing wings. You know how you know? There's no crowd here. 
<laughs> Sometimes I wonder, well, what are you even doing here? What are you finding here? Because, you know, you, there is nothing, you know, you, uh, who are you going to make this? Who, who's going to give you a contract here? Huh? <laughs> Maybe I give you a contract to come and help us to, to be sweeping the, the, the yard. <laughs> there is no, you know, if you are looking for contracts, uh -uh, you know where to go. If you are here, it must be because you are interested in God. Please don't spoil it with hypocrisy. Don't tell somebody you love them when you don't. Don't tell somebody, wait for me. When you don't, you are, you are not going to wait. Huh? You're not going to wait. Some people, you know, they, they, they tell somebody, you know, wait for me, wait for me. Yeah? He's gone to London. You understand? Huh? I was in external affairs. My cousin, my first cousin, you know, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not despising him. He said he wants to go to England. I should help him to get a visa for England. Hmm? I helped him to get visa for England. When he got to England, huh, he now wants to stay in England. So what does he do? Huh? He decided that he would have to marry somebody else in England. I listen to me. So that he will get the English passport. Then after some time, he will now divorce that person. And his own wife will now come and join him. That's what he did. He is now in England though, with his wife. But that was the route that he took. Not knowing that the God that brought him to England in the first instance uh, can establish him there. You don't have to do any mago mago for it. You understand? Uh? This guy just woke up one day. And his position changed in his office. <laughs> you know, at least he didn't tell us that he paid somebody money. He did something, you know, it, it, it surprised even him, but he knew it was God. People, people in the office were, I'm talking about this character that is looking at me here. <laughs> Today, huh? just out of the blue, that's God. That's God. Just wait for him. You don't have to scheme to get ahead. You don't have to do anything that will take you off the path. Huh? The straight and narrow path is where the blessing is. It's where everything is. Please, you don't have to pretend. We are all foolish people. There is nothing special about any of us. You understand? That's why we have midweek services in churches. Churches don't have the kind of midweek that we have. Everybody is talking. Huh? This one talk, this one talk, this one talk. You go to some church, you are talking. What, what are you talking about? Huh? Only the pastor talks, right? And if he tells you, start jumping, you jump. Huh? Start jumping. Kind of, I listened to one man, he said, you know, there's a reason why he left uh, uh, Christ Embassy. Because they said that, you know, it is the, it is the pastor's bad day, oh, yeah, everybody must contribute. You must bring money. He said, he, he, he's not bringing. He was in trouble. Pastor is, is having a bad day, you are not bringing money. Huh? He had to leave the church. You understand? Uh, I met one man because he said he was in one church and they said it was, everybody must contribute at the minimum 10,000 naira. Hmm? And he saved, 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 saved. When he got the 10,000 naira, God told him, there's one person called me, Ari Bisara. Give him my address. He said, that 10,000 naira that you have, go and give it to him. I didn't know the man from Adam. He wasn't from Healing Wings. Huh? He was not from Healing Wings. He brought the money. He said, God said, I should bring the money to you. I said, 10,000 Naira. I said, thank you. <laughs> this is wonderful. 10,000 Naira in those days, different from today. Huh? So I was very pleased. Then I said, what can I do for you? He said, I only have one petition. I want to go and play football abroad. They want to pray for God abroad. Oh yeah, let's join faith. I prayed with him. Within one month or two months, he wrote me. He was already playing football in Holland. Hmm? He wrote to me. He said, I'm, 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 I'm writing you from Holland. I'm in the 
in the Dutch league. I said, hallelujah, see what God can do. Huh? He didn't carry the money to the, 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 the pastor that was trying to collect 10,000 naira from them. He used to be here with his church. Huh? He told me that one day the pastor got annoyed. Are you people are not contributing money? You can steal. If you have to steal, go and steal and bring the money. I said, Are you sure? He said, He said, if you, Even if you have to steal, go and bring the money. Stop in the money. Don't you know it is God's house that we are building? Huh? Please. If somebody comes to you and says they have a spiritual problem, huh? the Bible says, If any man lacks wisdom, let him ask God. God will not say, Ah, oh, you're so stupid. Why are you so idiotic? No. He will give it to you. Hmm? We are his children. We act the same way. Somebody comes to you and say, look, this is what has happened. Huh? What happened? I committed adultery. Huh? Don't tell them, you are finished. You you committed adultery. You? Huh? Okay. I had, I had one example of a man like that, that committed adultery, went to talk to one of these fire, fire ministry. Man said, you are finished. You? After these years, you did this? Ah! The man committed suicide. He went and committed suicide because he met one hypocrite huh? that pretended as if we are not all sinners saved by the grace of God. You understand? Pretended as if he was, he, he was in a different realm, in a different, you know. Please, anybody comes with any problem, Cancel them with humility. Don't be so ah after all these years, we are still on this. We are still on this level. Huh? Be very careful. Be very careful. It's a short message. Let's look at Matthew chapter 6 from verse 1. It's a scripture that you know, but I'm going to read it to you in a way that you are you may not be familiar with. Elijah got tired. He said, the, the God that answers by fire, let him be God. You can't be standing in two positions. Matthew 6, 1. Be especially careful when you are trying to be good so that you don't make a performance out of it. It might be good theater, but the God who made you won't be applauding. When you do something for someone else, don't call attention to yourself. You've seen them in action. I'm sure, play actors, I call them, treating prayer meeting and street corner alike as a stage, acting compassionate as long as someone is watching, playing to the crowds. They get applause, true, but that's all they get. When you help someone out, don't think about how it looks. Just do it quietly and unobtrusively. That is the way your God, who conceived you in love, walking behind the scene, helps you out. And when you come before the Lord, don't turn that into a theatrical production either. All these people making a regular show out of their prayers, hoping for stardom. Do you think God sits in a box seat? Here is what I want you to do. Find a quiet, secluded place so you won't be tempted to role play before God. Just be there as you simply and honestly as simply and honestly as you can manage. The focus will shift from you to God. And you will begin to sense his grace. The world is full of so-called prayer warriors who are prayer ignorant. They are full of formulas and programs and advice, peddling techniques, forgetting what they want from God. Don't fall for that nonsense. This is your father you are dealing with, and he knows better than you what you need. I was at a meeting of pastors. I read a passage from the, from the message to them. They, they shouted in the middle of it, where are you reading for? Where are you reading for? Where are you? Because, because it never occurred to them. They never saw it that way at all. Huh? I said, I will finish reading it in the message. Then I read it in King James so that you will see that it's the same thing. It's the same thing. Let us pray. See, I have not come here to talk much. Let us pray. I said, I did not know. 
I didn't know I'm a, I'm a hypocrite. But God, who knows all things, he told me, Femi, you are the biggest hypocrite of all. And everything, huh, it is in the sight of the Lord. Joseph said, will I, why, why, why will I do this, this great wickedness and sin against God? No, no, no. We will not sin against our maker. We will not sin against God. Just go before him and say, Father, Lord, God Almighty, see me. See me, Lord. Mm -hmm. See me. I am not a graduate. I am a student. I am in kindergarten. I come to you as a little child. Father, Lord, God Almighty, I have come to learn at your feet. Lord God Almighty, take every pretense away from me. Anything and everything that makes me try to be more than what I am. Father, there is nothing that I have that I did not receive from you. Jehovah, I ask that you help me. Take control of my heart, Lord. Let me humble myself before you so that you may exalt me in due season. Let me not set my eyes on high things, Lord God Almighty, Father Lord God Almighty. Let me not compete for your glory, Father Lord, all the glory is yours. The glory belongs to you, Jesus. I need you to help me. I need you to help me. Take out of my heart every conceit. Let me not be a know-it-all. Every religious pride, take it away from me. Let me not be a latter-day Pharisee, O God, in the name of Jesus. Father, Lord, God Almighty, help me. Help me, Lord, because I don't want to lose you. I don't want to miss you. Father, Lord, God Almighty, then the pride, take, it, take, take, it, take me away from you. I declare, Lord, that there is no pride in this life. Vanity upon vanities, all these vanities. Lord, help me to only approve what is excellent. What is excellent in your sight, O God. Make me, Lord, to be wise unto salvation, O Lord, in the name of Jesus. Give me the success that only you can give in the name of Jesus. Give me the grace, Lord God Almighty, to wait for you. For my times, they are in your hands, O God. Lord God Almighty, let me wait for you. For he who believes will not make haste. I declare, Lord God Almighty, that you have taken me from time. You have put me in eternity. And so, Lord, I don't have to worry. I am not in any hurry. I know that you will do it for me. I know that you will remember me. You remembered Abraham. You remember me. You remember Noah. You will remember me. In due season, Father Lord God Almighty, let me not be weary. In well-doing, for in due season I will reap if I do not, if I do not faint. Lord God Almighty, thank you. Thank you because you have promised that you will help me. You have said you will strengthen me. You have promised to uphold me with your right hand of righteousness. And every promise of God, they are yea and amen in Christ. And so, Lord God Almighty, I receive help from you this morning. Help to be who you want me to be. Help to allow you to build me up as a spiritual house. One who offers spiritual worship to you in the name of Jesus. 
Lord God Almighty, I ask that you make me indeed your chosen generation, part of your holy people. Lord God Almighty, take every pride away from me. In the name of Jesus, pride was the downfall of Satan. It does not belong in the children of the Most High. Father, Lord God Almighty, we declare that in healing wings, we are gods. And all of us, we are the children of God in the name of Jesus. Father, we ask this morning that you perfect all that which concerns us. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen and amen. Please, let's be seated. Is there anybody here that has a testimony they want to share? Yes, uh, Sister Abigail. Praise the Lord. I thank God for this message. You know, the Bible says open rebuke is better than secret love. And it shows how, how much God loves us in healing wings. I also want to thank God for the seven days of midnight prayer that we had. Because it was a real spiritual awakening for me. And I thank the Lord for helping me complete my house rent. Thank God. I had done part of it and I, the remaining was just there hanging, but God provided and it's sorted. Thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. You don't mind the devil, though. The money was sent to you, but uh, GTB, they are still, I've, I've sent them a memo to say they have to fish out that money. Um, anybody else? Yes, Sister Harper. Praise God. So I want to thank God for adding 365 days for taking me through another year. <laughs> for seeing me through the through the waters, the fire, the floods. I'm just grateful. And I want God to know that indeed I am thankful. Praise the Lord. Did, did you cook chicken? <laughs> no chicken. <laughs> anybody else here? Okay, anybody at home? Hello. Uh, how do I resume? Uh, Is that good, Miss Ola? I can't hear you. I can see you. Yes. Good yeah. morning, sir. <laughs> Hello. Okay. Yeah, we can hear you now. Oh, good morning, church. I just wanted to thank God because my baby was um one year old yesterday. I just wanted to thank God for helping me raise her. No, no serious sickness. No, nothing like we've had like a blissful one year with her. So I just wanted to thank God for that. Glory be to God. We already prayed for her yesterday morning. Yeah. Yeah. Thank God. Christine. Good morning, church. Um, I just want to thank God for the final day of the prayer. I remember the of the night video prayer. I remember the night before when uh, Dr. Rivisala had said we should um, come with just one petition to God, I was thinking only one petition. Okay. And I I just said, Father, you will guide, you direct, because so many things are coming to mind. Um, but unknown to me, the the morning of um the morning before the final night of prayer, 
he more or less gave me a prayer request. I should pull forward and even confirm that he had answered it. So um, in my usual manner in the morning, I was just playing some songs, worshiping and all of that. And um, at some point, after I had done what I considered to be the usual, the time for that is over. Let me move on with everyday life. So I just wanted to, you know, blast uh, uh, a playlist I had on YouTube music, not gospel, uh, not gospel or anything of the sort. And I just felt kept on having a restraint. No, continue worshiping. No, continue. I was like, ah, uh -uh, it's okay now. We have to set the mood for the day. You know, hyping and get all, you know, bubbly for the day. But it just there was just this restraint. No, keep worshiping. No, keep playing these other uh, tunes. No, no. And I was just getting frustrated at some point. All through the day, even when I wasn't playing music per se from maybe my phone or the, I left my apartment, I wasn't playing any music or anything. There were just songs playing in my spirit, playing in my mind. And sometimes I would be conscious and realize that I was actually singing songs. And then we now had the prayer meeting and I realized what he wanted me to pray for and realized that he had answered. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Anybody else? Okay, thank God. Sister Esther, you pray for us. Please give your offering on your way out or into the account of the church. What the Lord has done for me, I cannot tell it all. What the Lord has done for me, I cannot tell it all. What the Lord has done for me, I cannot tell it all. He served me and washed me in his blood. I want us to begin to thank God for what God has done for us. We can't tell it all as I was sitting down there. This little boy just reminded me about one incident. I just, and I started remember what God has been doing. I just want us to thank God for everything he has been doing. I just want to just thank God for your protection over my life, over my family. Thank you because when I was not there, you are there watching. You cannot believe what happened this just last week on the direct wire from the pole to my to meter. My son carried the what do you call it antenna, and, and I said he wants to do it well. It can only be God. I just want to say, Lord, I thank you for what for the battle that you have been won. On in fact, that was the day I sat down inside the God said I should go out, and I went out and I saw the the lights coming up from the meter. I was like, God, who will I call? I just switched it off and I said. The, the, the following morning, my son was saying, why did you switch off this line? Mommy, I'm wondering, did I say, you won't understand. I can't explain it. There's so many things that happen when we are sleeping, where we don't even know. But God is there, helping us, guiding us. Even when the children and I went in the school, you don't know any battle God has won on our behalf. I just want to just appreciate God. We can't thank God, even in the midnight, we had people go to bed that they couldn't even wake up. One of my friends called me that and said, told me that, ah, my friend, you don't know what I'm going Going through, but this is what happened. How can I help? How can you help? How, because I know she's believing God for the fruit of the womb. And what she told me, I couldn't believe it that over seven years ago she wants to do operation for fibroid, and her uh, husband denied her. And it's not complicated that the thing is too big. They have to travel this and that. When I even heard the test, I was afraid of myself. I can't even pray. There's so many things, but God is so faithful. God is so faithful. This same lady went for the operation and she came back. Just, I want to just to say thank you for everything, for what my eyes can see, for what I can hear, for what you have been doing. Just little prayer, we will just pray and we will go out. And so many people pass through that road and they couldn't come back. Just let's all thank you, Lord. You have been so faithful. Thank you for your divine protection. Thank you because they are not to walk on every day on our behalf. You are protecting us. You don't allow any evil to come near us. But it can only be you. What can we say that this morning to say thank you for this year? You have what you have 
don't for us from January, you kept us in good health. It, when people are saying, this is a cat sit down, you are still feeding us with the good food. It can only be you when they are suddenly buy the basket of tobacco for 150. Ah, this same God, it is you who are our provider. He's our, you are our healer, you are everything to us. When the hospital bill is going on, you don't even allow us to experience this. Oh, Father, faithful are thou, you know. We appreciate you. We can't take you for granted. For every day, for your hand, I will see the hand of our protection, the hand of provision, your hand of healing over our loved ones, over our children. Father, we say thank you. You have done so much for us. We can't thank you enough. For this little one, for this, all this, one, and what more to do? You will forever be grateful. We want to give you praise in the head of our life. Daddy, we say thank you. Let's commit our week into the helpful hands of God. And we are going out this week. Lord, we depend on you. Our feeding, our transportation, our accommodation, our needs, our all sorts of things that we need. Father, we, we are trusting you. For you have done it before you will do it again. We thank you because we did not forget, we did not forget the, 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 the people in the heart. You remember them. How you sustain them with the little food they brought into the heart. So that day that you said they should come out. Father, how you will sustain us in this present condition of Nigeria. We are just trusting you. We don't care. We are not even concerned about what the tomato, the beans, the yam, the rice is say. We only trust you because you are the only source we have. And your words say, whosoever that put your trust in you will never be put to shame. Father, because our eyes is on you, we will not let us down. We will not be stranded. We will not beg for food. You will continue to provide for us in abundance. Oh, Father, Lord, I thank you because you will be doing it for healing with never. Somebody gave testimony to me that last of yesterday nothing but today you make it support but I will thank you because we pray the beginning of this year that, it, that when men say it's a casting that we say it's a lifting up for us but I will thank you because we will, not, we will remember us that we are inside this boat of Nigeria and you will surprise us you will be our provision to the end of day thank you daddy because nothing will take us from you nothing will block us out from your hand we will be more focused and more trust and we will continue to trust you that we will hear the food the good of the land in the name of Jesus, no matter what the price of things go, we will continue to eat the food of the, the good one of the land. Thank you, Daddy, because you will sustain us to the end. Thank you, Daddy, because it is well with us, we saw our body, it is well with our children. Daddy, we God to speak in your name, oh Lord. We have no power of our own. We have no power. Holy Spirit, I suppose we have no power, no love. How heavenly Father, we thank you. We bless you because we're a faithful God. We confess before you, we have no power of our own. We have no source of our own to sustain this economy. We have no strength. We have no clue. We have no idea. We know we have you as a living God. Thank you, Daddy, because your words are standing up up to this moment. And your word will keep us to the head. We are not we are not going to be with your words to care for nothing. We are not going to be care about what is happening outside because we know that you will continue to sustain us. You will sustain us. We will sustain our home. You will sustain our children. We will sustain all everything that concerning us. Lord, this way we go in your name. We look up to you that you will surprise us. As men that are looking up to you, Jehovah, in this ministry for one thing or the other. Is it the accommodation we cried on you this morning? Why we have no idea. We have no clue. We have no strength. But we know that you are able to do exceedingly, abundantly. That is as much as this time is a new season. It is a new season, oh Lord, in our life. That we are calling on you. That you will visit every home. That you will visit every life. Even the one that you are afraid, you are even, even forgetting that I can go do this. I know you are in, in, in the, you are God of miracle. You have done it before in so many lives. Ah, is it not you, Jehovah, that make it that sign that when things are saying that the, 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 the prophet said by this time tomorrow our own case you have every way to supply need you have beautiful children in your hand you have beautiful husband in your hand you have beautiful, beautiful wife in your hand is it good house you have it is it 
just go for peace in your heart. What can you not do? Is there anything that is too big for you that you cannot do? Is there any prayer that you cannot answer? Papa, Lord, we are calling on you. As many house, as many hope that is trusting you, that they are hope and they are trusting you. Papa, this week, I pray that you will remember us, oh Lord. You will remember every life. You will remember everyone that said that thought that sweet in is a dead one. You will remember that one this way. You will remember as many sisters that they say, when is it going to be your time? That this day is so long, we cry on to you, daddy, that you will remember them for good, oh Lord. Lord, I pray that trust you for admission, Jehovah. You will remember them for good, oh Lord. I trust you for the, the, the works of their hand, daddy, that Lord, when is it going to be the time that you establish it? going to be the time that you will do this? When is it going to be the time you will answer every and every prayer? You will give that, uh, that will change that prayer point to testimony in every life, in every home, oh Lord. You will turn things around for good for us, oh Lord. That we will come back to give you praise because we have done it. Our week is blessed in your name. Our going out and our coming in, we are blessed and highly favored. Your favor will make a way for us. Your checking out glory will be upon us, oh Lord. Oh, that we all that our footstep this way, and you will make us a lot of work in that path that suitable. You will help us a lot of work in that direction that you have meant for us, Lord. None of us in this ministry, Lord, will miss rapture. None of us will miss the purpose of being created, oh Lord. We will all fulfill our purpose, Lord. We will not will all live to that day that you are purposed, Lord. None of us will be cut short, oh Lord. And we say, for we forbid sickness, we forbid infirmity in the name of Jesus Christ. We speak joy and happiness into every hope that is going through to storm this period. We speak to every Free life, every and anything, anything in the kitchen. That it will speak soft words and increase into every life in every, every home in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, we thank you because you have done it. Glory be to your holy name, O Lord. Thank you, Jesus. We give you glory, Lord. We give you glory, Lord. As we worship you, you are wonderful. You are worthy, oh Lord. You are wonderful. You are worthy, oh Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Say to the